Hi everyone, my name is Christopher Torres. I'm a PhD student at the University of Luxembourg. And today we'll be presenting our work called Frontrunner Jones and the Raiders of the Dark Forest, an empirical study of front running on the Ethereum blockchain. This is joint work by my colleagues Ramiro Camino and Radu Stato. Now, before I dive deeper into our study, I will quickly give a short introduction into what is known as a dark forest in Ethereum. Now let's briefly recap the mining process in Ethereum. Assume we have a network of four nodes where each node has its own pool of pending transactions, also known as the mempool. Pending transactions are transactions that are waiting to be included in the next block. Now, if a user wants its own transaction to be included, he or she has to first send its transaction to one of the nodes. In this case, it's node one. Node one will then put the transaction of the user into its own mempool and broadcast it to the other nodes. Now let's assume that node four is a miner. The task of a miner is to select some transactions from the mempool and to put them into a new block. Now space inside a block is limited, as a miner has to decide which transactions to prioritize. A large number of miners prioritize transactions by the gas price, since these transactions will give the miner a higher reward. Now the issue with Ethereum and also other blockchains is that the mempool is publicly visible to anyone and users are aware that they can position their transactions by playing with the gas price of their transactions. And this enables so-called front-running attacks. In this study, we consider three types of front-running attacks. The first one is displacement, also known as replay attack. An attacker sees a profitable pending transaction TV and decides to copy TV and to submit its own transaction using its own account with a higher gas price, such that its transaction is executed first. The second attack is called insertion, or also known as sandwich attack. An attacker observes a large purchase TV and sends two transactions, where the first transaction has a higher gas price than TV and purchases the same asset as TV. The second transaction, however, has a smaller gas price than TV in order to be executed after TV and sells the previously purchased asset. The attacker profits from the price difference due to the large purchase of TV. Finally, the third attack is called suppression, or also known as lock stuffing. Imagine a lottery where if nobody purchases a ticket for five minutes, the last purchaser becomes the winner. The goal of the attacker is to purchase a ticket and to prevent any other competing transactions TV to be included into the next block for a given amount of time. The attacker therefore tries to fill the blocks with its own transactions such that TV is not included. The attacker's transactions are all prioritized since they have a higher gas price than TV. Now I'll briefly explain our attacker model. An attacker can be either a miner or a non-miner. However, in our study we only focus on detecting non-miners. Moreover, attackers are required to monitor pending transactions, search for victim transactions and to create their own transactions. We therefore assume that attackers automate those tasks using an off-chain program that we call a bot. Bots have access to externally owned accounts in order to send transactions on the behalf of the attacker. We also assume that those accounts have a sufficiently large balance. Finally, we assume that those bots use on-chain smart contracts in order to better coordinate attacks that require multiple transactions. Now we'll discuss how we detect those three types of front-running attacks using only historical blockchain data. To detect displacement, we first split the range of blocks to be analyzed into windows of 100 blocks with an offset of 20 blocks. Afterwards, for each transaction, we'll split the input bytes into n-grams of 4 bytes and store them inside a Bloom filter. The idea is to first use a Bloom filter to quickly check if a similar transaction has been observed in the past, and only if 95% of the n-grams match, then we perform an expensive linear search where we check if the input of one transaction isn't contained inside another transaction. Once we find two matching transactions TA and TV, we then run three heuristics. First we check if the sender and receiver of TA and TV are different. Then we check if TA has a higher gas price than TV. And finally we check whether at least 25% of TV's input bytes conform with those of TA. Finally, in order to validate our finding, we use a simulation environment in order to check if executing TA before TV results in a different state than executing TA after TV. To detect insertion, we analyze block by block by first getting all the ERC20 token transfer events for all transactions contained in a block. Afterwards, we use six heuristics to identify if some of the events 
on the result of an insertion attack. First, we check whether TA1 and TV purchase tokens from the same address and if TA2 sells tokens to the exact same address. We also check if TA1 sends tokens to the same address from which TA2 afterwards sells tokens. Second, we check whether the amount that is being bought by TA1 is almost identical to the amount that TA2 is selling. Third, we check whether TA1, TB, and TA2 are executing those trades using the same token contract. Fourth, we make sure that TA1, TV, and TA2 have different transaction hashes. Fifth, we check whether the transaction index of TA1 is larger than TV and whether the transaction index of TV is larger than TA2. And finally, sixth, we check if TA1 has a higher gas price than TV and if TA2 has an identical or lower gas price than TA2. Now, to detect suppression, we first cluster transactions within the block by its receiver. Afterwards, we check for each cluster if the following three heuristics apply. First, the cluster must contain more than one transaction. Second, each transaction within the cluster must consume more than 21,000 gas units. And third, the proportion between gas used and the gas limit must be over 99% for all transactions. Afterwards, we check if at least one of the two neighboring blocks also contains at least one cluster that fulfills the same heuristics. Finally, we check for the remaining clusters if the first transaction employs one of the three suppression strategies, namely a controlled gas loop, an uncontrolled gas loop, or an assert. Now we'll talk about the analysis that we did on the results that we gathered. We analyzed the cost and profit for all three types of attacks. In total, we measured 199,725 attacks, where roughly 98% are insertion attacks. The overall accumulated profit is more than $18 million. When comparing the three attacks, we see that suppression can bring the highest profit, but also involves the highest cost. However, we also see that displacement has no risk since attackers only send out one transaction and do not depend on the victim transaction. Finally, we see that insertion is the most popular type of attack. This is probably due to the numerous traders on decentralized exchanges. When looking at the trends, we can see that in 2018, the majority of the attackers were doing suppression. And we see that the number of suppression attacks became less over time. However, for displacement and insertion attacks, we see the opposite. Those types of attacks became more popular over time and increased tremendously in 2020. Now, if you have a closer look at the insertion attack and these are of exchanges, you see that it all started with Bancor, and that the attacks were at the beginning only from time to time. However, we also see that while in the beginning it took some time for attackers to write bots for Bancor and Uniswap version 1, it didn't take very long for Uniswap version 2 and SushiSwap to be invaded by insertion bots. We also see that bots migrated from Uniswap version 1 towards Uniswap version 2 after its release. Finally, we can also see a continuous increase in daily front running attacks since 2020. Now, if you have a closer look at the distribution of attacks across exchanges, we see that most attackers focus on only one exchange, the most popular exchange being Uniswap version 2. However, we also observe that some attackers are performing insertion attacks two or four different exchanges in parallel. What is also interesting is that we observed several attackers that initially went through exchanges in order to mount their attacks, but then decided to make use of bot contracts to coordinate the attacks. This resulted in more successful attacks. Finally, we also analyzed the victims of suppression attacks and the distribution of the suppression strategies. In the following table, we see the 15 contracts that were victims of suppression attacks. While majority only suffered from one attack, we can see that popular contracts such as Formal 3D Long and Last Winner suffered from 14 and 16 attacks respectively. When analyzing the suppression strategies employed, we see that most attackers opt for the assert method, but we also see that it failed 18 out of 20 times. The most reliable strategy is using a controlled gas loop where 8 out of the 18 attacks were successful. Now we'll shortly conclude our work. In this work, we presented an efficient methodology to detect displacement, insertion, and suppression attacks using Ethereum's past transaction history. 
We also performed an extensive measurement study by analyzing more than 11 million blocks on the Ethereum blockchain. We identified almost 200,000 front-running attacks performed by over 1,500 accounts and more than 500 bots with an accumulated profit of over $18 million for the attackers. Finally, in our paper, we were able to group these accounts and bots into 137 unique attacker clusters. And we also discuss the implications of front-running on the Ethereum ecosystem, where we discovered that miners already made a profit of over $300,000 due to non-miners engaging in front-running. Please check out our paper for more interesting results and details. Now, thank you very much for your attention. All the code and data is publicly available on GitHub. If you have any questions, feel free to drop me a message at christoph.torres at uni.lu. This work was supported by Ripple's University Research Initiative and the Luxembourg National Research Fund.